Today we're going to talk about possible 2019 offensive line scenarios for Bill Biedenboe and all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ! What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. So it's OU related, college football related, sports related, we have a good time and today we're going to talk about the 2019 offensive line and the rebuilding job ahead for Bill Biedenboe. Now folks that know from the offensive line know not to bother Bill Biedenboe about what five men he, he's going to put out there. In the same way that you don't really bother Lincoln Riley about what the offense is going to look like and which quarterback he chooses. For all of I care, he could pick Colton Atkinson to be back there, and I'd be fine with that if Lincoln is behind that dude as the guy. But one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this is I met a dude by the name of Emmanuel Palmer at Best Buy. He was out there buying more stuff for this show, trying to make it better, trying to figure out what people like, what people don't like. Obviously, I'm going to talk more about the spring concert because I got lots to say about that. I'm joking. Halfway. Really going to talk about what I want to talk about. But I wanted to know from him, as a guy who watches the show, as a guy who told me, look, I really enjoyed the premieres. I kind of wanted them to come back because I like knowing what's ahead and I like planning my day around it. And I said, okay, cool. That's the kind of feedback that I'm looking for. So if you have feedback like that, please tell me about it in the comments below. Tell me how you consume the channel, what your ideal channel video length is, what you like to see more of, how you like the upload schedule. You know we go live at 6 p.m. daily. You know we live stream on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. But more than that, about just how you go through life as this channel becomes a bigger part of how you consume YouTube and the media around you. So I asked him, what do you want me to talk about? Like, what do you want to hear tonight? Because he's asking about what was tonight. And I said, eh, you know, like, as much as I can tell you, like, Joseph Wet Day is going to be on tonight. And I'm sure most of you have already seen that video. Really great interview. He said, hey, man, tell me who you think is going to be the starting five offensive linemen at Oklahoma come August 31st. And I said, all right, cool. And I started to write him off. And I was like, do you want this to just be the show for the day? And he's like, yes, absolutely. Go through your scenarios for me. I said, cool. So to start with, I think the way that the offensive line works out come August 31st is actually kind of simple when you get down to the nitty gritty of having Creed Humphrey back, who's missing spring ball, and getting RJ Proctor ingratiated with the team and ready to perform in preseason camp. So I think going left to right at left tackle, Eric Swenson, because he was backing up Bobby Evans last year, you go to left guard, and I think that's where RJ Proctor figures to play and where he looked very good against Virginia, so that's a natural fit for me. Of course, Creed Humphrey at center. At right guard, thinking Tyrese Robinson, because that guy's actually playing a little bit of center, may not look that great, but if you trust that guy to play some center, you must push that guy to be a starter, and he was also backing up right guard last year. And then at right tackle, I'm looking at Adrian Ely almost more than I'm looking at anybody else. Now, I projected mine are, again, Eric Swenson, R.J. Proctor, Creed Humphrey, Tyrese Robinson, and Adrian Ely. Now, I'm sure that fans of Marquise Hayes are like, where's that dude? I think he could be there, but I also know that he was backing up left guard last year, and if you brought in another left guard in a grad transfer, perhaps Marquise Hayes needs to pick him up and put him down to earn the job, right? None of this is set in stone, but also, you could see him going with the older guys, as they've had more experience playing college football at some level than others. I could see him giving David Swaby some run. Finley Felix was a highly regarded JUCO commit and signee. He's here. He could get some run as well. We're also talking about what EJ and Doma Ogar could do for Oakland when he gets here. I think that guy slots in at center nicely. That would be your backup if you don't want to redshirt him. That would be your backup for Creed Humphrey. I also think a guy like Tyrese Robinson could play as a backup at center. Drew Samia was doing that late in the year as Jonathan Alvarez retired from football. I could also see other scenarios where he just decides to go with his pups and grow them up. Bray Walker at left tackle. Daryl Simpson at right tackle. You could put EJ at center if that's how you felt about it. I really don't think anybody's playing center but Creed Humphrey, but you could do it. I also think that Marquise Hayes and Adrian Ely could figure at the guard positions if you don't like what you see out of RJ Proctor. 
I'm saying that you don't have the kind of depth that you want from an experience standpoint, obviously. But you do have bodies and you have lots of guys that can play different positions all over the offensive line. And that only bodes well for you if you're Oklahoma, if you're Lincoln Riley, if you're Bill Biedenboe. You know you have lots of clay to mold. And if anybody in football, let alone college football, knows how to whip an offensive line into shape with four brand new starters, be Bill Biedenbo. He's already done this once before. And I believe he's the real secret treasure at Oklahoma. National folks don't really know what kind of a job Bill Biedenbo has done since he got to Oklahoma where he took an offensive line that was middling to average to the best in college football in a very short amount of time. He and Lincoln Riley have a chemistry together where they understand how things need to operate in the run game and in pass pro. And I think that this is going to be fun for us to watch as spring game gets here on April 13th. But I don't think you're going to be able to draw any conclusions about the offensive line at all based on what you see. Except maybe you'll be looking at technique. And some of that is going to be some of these dudes know what they're doing. Others do not. So we're really not going to be able to nail this down until preseason camp. But you could say that about most things. My point here is that you have what you need to create an offensive line that can block for Jalen Hurts and that can, more importantly, block for these really talented tailbacks that Oklahoma has brought in. And you can be really, really good and make another run in the college football playoff at this time at a national championship. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.